Lee Remick was a Hollywood actress who rose to prominence in the 1960s, thanks to roles in films like Anatomy of a Murder and Days of Wine and Roses. Sadly, she suffered during her final years after being diagnosed with cancer in 1989. Although the last few years of her life was hard, one of the last memories she was given was a happy one. Just months before passing away, Lee made her final public appearance, accepting her very own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Join Factsverse as rare photos show inside Lee Remick's final days. Lee Remick was born December 14, 1935, in Quincy, Massachusetts. When she was only seven, her parents divorced. Left alone with her mother and brother, the family moved to New York City. While Lee's father had worked in clothing, her mother was an actress on stage. This allowed for Lee to start developing some aspirations of her own. Lee's mother was an actress named Gertrude Margaret Waldo, and she helped her daughter follow in her footsteps. When Lee was still young, her mother enrolled her in a prestigious dancing academy called Swoboda School of Dance at the Hewitt School in New York. There, Lee received personal dancing lessons from esteemed ballerina Maria Swoboda. Lee studied with a special emphasis on theatrical dancing. Swoboda had previously been a member of the Bolshoi Ballet, a Russian classical ballet company that has long been considered one of the preeminent of its kind. Lee was lucky enough to count herself amongst Maria's pupils, and the training came in handy later during her career. When it came time for Lee to pursue higher education, she studied at Barnard College in Manhattan. She also did some studying at the Actors Studio. But she had to work for a living to support herself, and found it hard to balance her active studies with her need to work. Soon into her time studying at Barnard, she called it quits, she dropped out to focus on acting. A professor at Barnard had advised Lee she was stretching herself too thin and needed to decide whether she wanted to focus specifically on pursuing an education, becoming an actress, or working a menial job. Lee realized what she really wanted to do was become an actress. She quit school and started auditioning for as many roles as she could. She had already begun acting professionally during college, and it wasn't difficult for Lee to take the leap of faith and make the full transition into her career. She made her debut on Broadway in 1953, acting in Be Your Age. The show didn't perform very well with audiences and was put to an end after five performances. Still, Lee had stood out to the crowd, and the short-lived show managed to bring the burgeoning actress some much-needed recognition. Lee always maintained a stronger love for acting on stage over film. However, the medium of film proved to be where Lee found the majority of her commercial success. Her first performance in a film came when she was 22. She was cast alongside star Andy Griffith in the film A Face in the Crowd. Thanks to this film, she would soon become a major star. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Facts First for more. And stick around for a lot more about Lee Remick. Shortly after making her debut, her career started to take off even more quickly. She starred in the film Tribute, marking her first collaboration with actor Jack Lemmon. The two worked together again in the 1962 film Days of Wine and Roses, which netted Lee an Academy Award nomination. During her career, Lee became known for taking on roles that were psychologically demanding. She could be seen playing neurotic female characters in the films A Delicate Balance and The Letter both of which garnered the actress immense acclaim from critics and audiences. Given how good she was at portraying neurotic characters, many began to believe Lee must be somewhat disturbed herself. But she had a happy childhood and was a well-balanced adult. Lee Remick starred in many films over the course of her career. Some of the most notable include starring alongside Paul Newman in The Long Hot Summer and opposite Frank Sinatra in The Europeans. While Lee may never have become a movie star who sold tickets based on her name alone, she became a highly respected actress who always turned in a fantastic performance when it was asked of her. As she progressed through her professional career, she was also progressing through a few notable romances. In 1958, Lee married a television producer named Bill Colloran. The pair went on to have two children together before eventually divorcing in 69. The two children were Kate and Matthew, and they survived Lee after her 1991 death. A year later, Lee married another TV producer, this time named William Rory Goins, or Kip. Lee married Kip Goins in 1970, and they remained married until her death. Her last acting role was the made-for-television feature Dark Holiday. It was based on the real-life story of a traveling woman who was talked into buying an antique in Turkey that she didn't want and unwittingly got arrested attempting to take it out of the country. Also known as Passport to Terror, Lee had no idea her role in the feature would end up being her very last. The same year the film premiered, she was diagnosed with cancer after tumors were found in her kidneys and lungs. 
According to Lee, she felt totally fine until the diagnosis. But once she learned the truth, the illness hit her like a ton of bricks. After learning about her cancer diagnosis, Lee felt adamant she was going to be able to fight her way through the disease. She did her best and also became a strong advocate for others fighting the disease. But her battle with cancer didn't prove successful, as the actress died two years later. When it became apparent the cancer wasn't going to go away, the doctors decided to cease Lee's treatment so she could live the last remaining weeks of her life in peace. They were stopped two weeks before she died, allowing her to die peacefully without the hassle of painful and intrusive cancer treatments that didn't seem to be helping anyway. Many close friends visited Lee around this time, including former co-star Jack Lemmon. The two had remained friends after working together multiple times, and Jack shared that it was hard to see her in the state she was. Other people came out of the woodwork to say their goodbyes to Lee in the final weeks of her life, including James Stewart, who had starred with her in the film Anatomy of a Murder. Like Jack Lemmon, James had immense professional respect for Lee and considered her a wonderful person and close friend. Lee died in July of 1991, and her last public appearance was in April of that year. Her final appearance was to accept her star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, which she did with all the style and grace fans had come to expect. If Lee was suffering at the time, which she most definitely was, it wasn't apparent to those in the audience. In the years before her death, Lee Remick had become friends with a fellow cancer fighter named Jill Ireland. Jill was the wife of Charles Bronson until she died. She passed away in May of 1990 from cancer, a year before Lee. While the two were alive and together, they did their best to support each other through their respective battles. At the time of Lee's death in 1991, in July, she was 55. Now it's time to hear from you. Did you know that actress Lee Remick died from cancer in 1991? Or did you think she was still around today? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.